The Liberal government just backstopped the real estate market again. In another form to, I would arguably say, buy votes from first-time home buyers, they now just introduced the fact that you can amortize 30 years on all of your first-time home purchases on top of the fact that they're increasing the cap of $1 million for insured mortgage up to 1.5, effectively increasing it by 50%. This is going to have a really, really big impact on the real estate market, and it's going to be effective in December 15th. How is this going to impact the real estate market from now until then and what will happen afterwards? This is kind of where I will be discussing all of the ramifications of these potential changes that are coming to the Canadian real estate market. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, if you do want to work with me on your next real estate move, whether you're buying or selling or investing, because we're in like full swing in the fall market right now, and you want to kind of chat about your plans and whether they make sense for the current market and your unique situation, you could do so by booking a call with me. Use the link that's on the screen. It's right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Simply click on the date and a time that works best for you. And then when you see the prop, fill in your name, email, mobile phone number, and a question you have for me, and then we'll chat then. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Properties TV. My name is Zen. I'm enjoying the content I'm putting out there. Do me a favor and like and subscribe. So the article we'll be reviewing today is Freelid allowing more 30-year mortgages, higher values for insured. So for any context, everyone doesn't remember, in August 1st, they allowed for anyone who's buying a pre-construction as a first-time home buyer to get an insured mortgage for 30 years instead of the usual 25. And when you go from 25 to 30 years, it generally means that your payment's lower, which means you can generally qualify anywhere between like 10 to 15% more. The problem with that and why I said it was a nothing burger at the time was that like most people buying you know pre-construction need to come up 20% down anyways. So ta-da, let's juice it up some more. And that's exactly what they did. So you can see now here that Starting December 15th, the cap for insured mortgages will rise from 1 million to 1.5, which I actually think is the biggest change. And this will apply for all people buying their first home, whether it's pre-construction or new or resale. So now let's you know think about this. So anyone who is looking for resale can now do 30 amortization. So that subset of people are now able to buy with another 10, 15%. And I would say like, it's not a large amount of people, right? Because if you look at this chart I have over here, you can see that the insured mortgage is like dwarfed by the uninsured, which is over 20%. So I would say this amount will increase a little bit. So it'll add a little bit more demand to the current market right now. Now, the big thing is that now we're increasing that $1 million to 1.5. So what essentially that means is anyone who was buying with less than 20% down before was effectively hamstrung at 999 and 9999. So they couldn't buy more than that unless they had more than 20% down. The math works up to roughly like $75,000 to buy a million dollar property. That's kind of down payments like seven and a half percent because of the sliding scale versus once you get to the million threshold, you have to have 20% down. So the difference between the 999, 999 and the 1 million effectively is $125,000 and saving that $125,000 was very difficult, right? And even if you had a gift, you know, like that gift the parents had to give you was a very substantial gift, right? And now that they're juicing this to $1.5 million, that percent down can change, right? Now we don't have the fine details of what it's gonna look like because it's like 5% for the first $500,000 right now and it slides up to 99999 up to like 7.5 in total for that. But let's just say, you know, 10% for is you know, the minimum down for this, right? 1.5. That means you now need $150,000 instead of $300,000 to buy this. But what this effectively does in my mind is that it opens up the demand like I want to say floodgates, but anyone who is kind of like, hey, I want to buy something in the freehold space, but I couldn't save enough down for it, effectively can now if they have a high enough income. So let me tell you where I think this is going to see the biggest impact. So right now, if you were gifted $100,000 to $150,000, realistically, you would have a hard time buying a freehold property. So in Toronto and like most of York region, you can't get away with a freehold for less than a million bucks. If you go to the east and west a little bit on the outskirts, you can probably do it, right? So by increasing this cap to $1.5 million, it just opened the room for all these people who wanna buy a freehold space, call it a town home, an entry town, or like, you know, an entry semi, to be able to afford it now without having to call it $200,000 plus down payment. So that is, I would say, probably the largest demand curve that's gonna be added into the current market right now.
And I've said this before, like, I really think the freehold market has bottomed, right? So like detached homes, semis and towns. And the fact that this just came out, I'm like, yeah, that space is going to be like, woohoo, hundred percent likely going to happen. Right. Where this doesn't affect is the condo market because most condos that are being bought and sold right now are sub a million bucks. So they could have done less than, you know, 20% down anyways, unless you're an investor. But again, we're talking about first time home buyers because, you know, they're trying to buy the votes there. So this is going to drive the freehold space some more. And the problem is we're not even creating enough freehold uh, supply. And that was always kind of why I was like, look, I think the freehold prices have bottom because people are coming back. And I think this is just going to add more demand, right? Unfortunately, this is not going to affect the condo market too much, like I said earlier. So condo market's still going to be in like a little bit of a softer market. Now, Freeland says that the changes will put more buying power into the hands of the first time home buyers and give them an advantage in the market. I want to say it gives them an advantage. It just allows them to take on more debt, right? Because if I look over here and I did the math for you guys, let's say you're at 1.5 million, you know, 20% down right now at 30 year amortization, you're at 4.5%, you're at 6,000. Before this could even exist and you had to do 25 years, which made this, you know, much, much higher. But now that this can exist, you're basically paying an extra $800 a month. So if that first time home buyer had the income to kind of qualify for it, then yeah, it doesn't necessarily give them an advantage. It just allows them to compete with the other person who has 20% down. But effectively, they're taking on like, you know, a sizable mortgage, right? The real question that I'm not sure right now and uh, over here is what kind of insurance premiums like CMHC insurance premiums are going to be added here? Because this right here doesn't have any CMHC insurance premiums and it probably is going to be higher than that. But if the difference is like $1,000 to get into a freehold space, I suspect most people want to, you know, ultimately do it. now. Over here, it says Freelance said offering looser mortgage terms is about encouraging builders to build more shovels and put them in the ground. Um, yeah, I don't really think so because I think where we're seeing the problems right now is the condos, the performance and the numbers don't work for the developers. A lot of the freehold properties that are in pre-construction phase are actually still kind of selling right now because again, people want that ground-based home to raise a family in. And I've talked about this many times before where the millennial generation are now all having kids. Right. So they want, you know, ground based housing. So I think getting more, you know, like buyers in there maybe doesn't necessarily get more shovels in the ground because most of that product was already being bought anyways. Right. So I don't necessarily agree with that. So those are kind of my thoughts on what's happening with this like 30 year amortization and the one point five million dollar cap. I feel like like years ago, I said, look, if things become unaffordable, they're just going to make this kind of happen, like increase amortization, and increase the cap. And here we go. Now, I guess the biggest thing I'm thinking of is like, not to get all political, but like if an election does get called, does this get scrapped? I don't know, right? Because a part of me thinks that like, you know, if you want housing to continue getting more and more expensive, I feel like voting in the liberals make the most sense, <laughs> right? So this is still TBD. It's on the docket for December 15th. And, you know, obviously depends on who's in power at the time right now. But if this does come into effect, just understand that I really think it's going to drive the freehold space so much more. And it's just going to keep the condo space kind of exactly where it is. So, yes, this is going to help a lot of first time home buyers who have some kind of capital who are just like saving up for the first property in the freehold space. Does it help the rest of the market that's kind of dragging it down being the condo space? No, not really. Anyways, I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on what's happening in the real estate market. And then, oh, goodness, like so much stuff keeps changing all the time now that we're back, you know, in like the fall market. So if you do want to work with me and get an understanding of what's happening in the kind of real estate market right now and kind of marry that up with your personal situation to kind of determine whether, you know, the move buying or selling makes sense or not, you could do so by booking a call with me using the link that's on the screen. That's right here. It's www.chatwithz.com. Until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one or this one? You know what? Just watch them both. <laughs>